Hey everyone, welcome to our videos for our 2022 Go Engineer Kids Camp. My name is Tony and I'll be walking you through the models for this year's project. We've been having our engineering design camps for about nine years now. We've always tried to come up with something fun and exciting while we teach you about design and 3D printing. So that's right up my alley because I get to use SOLIDWORKS and 3D printers for something different every day. We get to see things from automotive, aerospace, oil and gas, consumer goods, you know, stuff you see around your house, stuff you see on the shelves in the stores. Everything that you see and touch Someone had a part in designing it, manufacturing it, and anything else needed to get into your hands. So why are you all here today? Did you have an interest in becoming a designer, an engineer, or just wanted out of the house for a bit? Either answer is perfectly fine. Uh, when I was your age, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I grew up. I knew I liked taking things apart and trying to figure out how they worked. So I may have been destined to become a mechanical engineer from the beginning. So we've done some interesting projects over the years, but this year I was trying to find something interesting to use. I looked and I looked. I looked online, the toys and electronics sections, even walked the aisles at Target. I saw something there that might have worked, but decided to keep on looking. I went back to the office and walked through the 3D printer room again. There on the cabinet, something I forgot about. Then again over on the next shelf and the next shelf. What about a 3D printed skateboard? I'd seen this mini skate park from Tech Deck while I was at the store. The skateboard design could be simple enough to do and we could have fun with assemblies and other interesting topics. So people are always drawn to our 3D printed skateboard that we have. We printed one, had it painted, came out so nice, we didn't want anybody to scratch it up and use it, so we printed another one. People are surprised that it actually works. Plenty strong for sure. We even had one of our engineers do a kickflip on it. I would have killed myself if I had tried it. So I picked up one of the skate parks and modeled some of the parts in SOLIDWORKS. She would work out great for demonstrating how to put together assemblies, plus some other fun topics. We could teach you a little bit about modeling up some of the skateboard in SOLIDWORKS, then you'll have some of the tools necessary to take some of your own ideas and create a 3D model of them. Once you have the basics, all you need is a little bit of creativity and imagination and you can design anything. We've seen some of the kids that come through the design camp do some amazing things by the end of the day. The fun thing is that as I was putting these topics together, I kept running into several things that I've seen grown engineers have trouble with but I think we can actually make it very easy for young designers to grasp these concepts. So we'll see how it goes. The big question is how do we get started? I'm gonna have you all watch me for a bit and then we'll turn you loose to give it a shot. With SOLIDWORKS, we have parts, assemblies, and drawings. Once we have our parts done, we can put them together in an assembly and see how they work together. Then we can use drawings to document our designs. There are many ways to get started, but we'll look at a few ideas to get you started on the right foot. When we start SOLIDWORKS, we have options to open an existing file or start a new one. I'm going to click on the icon to start a new part. Once the part opens up, we can see several things. Across the top of the screen, we have a number of menus and toolbars. On the left side, we have a feature manager tree that shows us the history of our parts and assemblies, how they were created step by step. In that same area, we can see three planes, the front, the top, and the right planes. We will create 2D sketches starting on one of these planes to base our part off of. Okay, so imagine we're modeling this desk. Maybe I draw this L shape on the top plane since it represents the top of my desk. If I draw this rectangle, maybe I'm going to draw that on the front plane since it's the front of the laptop. I've got a right plane. Maybe I draw this L shape here for my laptop and extrude it out from the middle since that's kind of the shape of the laptop. 
for the part that we're going to be working on today, we're going to try something that just some people just don't get. We're going to come in and take a look at the, the front view and maybe a top view. And we're going to combine those two shapes and give us our final overall skateboard design. So let's see what we can do. So there's a PDF of a drawing that has all the dimensions that you're going to need to model this part. I'll stick the PDF in with the other files that you can download. All that being said, we're going to come in and we're going to model the front profile on the front plane and then the top shape on the top plane. So how do we get started? So watch me for a little bit and I'll show you. We have a part started, so the next thing we need to do is verify what units we're using. Check down in the bottom right hand corner of SOLIDWORKS and it will show you the units. If it doesn't list IPS for inch, pounds, and seconds, we can use the flyout to change it over to inches. Now to start a sketch. If we left click over on the front plane in the Feature Manager tree, a menu will pop up. The first icon in that menu will let us start a brand new sketch on the top plane. If we do it that way, it will rotate around and we'll be looking straight at the top plane. Now what do we sketch? The Command Manager toolbar at the top of the screen has changed over to the Sketch tab when we started our new sketch. There are a number of things we can pick from. Maybe a line, circle, rectangle, arc, and several more. Some of them even have a few other icons that are available for different choices of what to draw. We'll start simple and let you guys have a chance to try them out and do something on your own computer. The line command should be very simple, but there are two different ways to draw a line. The way that I like to do it, and then the wrong way. I mean the other way. So I'm going to show you the way that I like to draw lines first. It's called the click-drag method. So watch this. If I go in and start the line command, the icon turns over to look like a pencil. And if I click in space and hold down the mouse button, I can drag out a line. And then I can let go when I'm ready to finish. Click, drag, let go. We can keep going and do click, drag, let go again. If we need to look at a line that starts at the end of this other line, we can click on it and drag it out as well. Notice some of the feedback I'm getting on the screen. I can see the approximate length of the line. I can tell when the line might be vertical or horizontal, when it's parallel or perpendicular to another line, when I'm hovering over additional endpoints. All this cursor feedback is going to help me figure out what to draw. So that's the click drag method. Now we can try the click click method. I don't hate this method, but I've seen people have issues with it if they don't know a few things. So instead of clicking and dragging, I'm going to just keep clicking where I want the line to be drawn. Click, 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 click. Okay, but how do I stop? If I'm ready to stop drawing a line or a rectangle, circle, or anything else for that matter, I can just hit the escape key on the keyboard. That will get me out of most commands. But what if I need to still keep drawing additional lines? Let's see another way. I'm going to start the line command again. Click, 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 click. Now, if I'm done with those lines, I can do a quick double click out in space and it will stop drawing those lines. It still leaves me in the line command, unlike the escape key. Another way would be to do a click, 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 and if I make a closed profile, it will still leave me in the line command, but stop drawing on that profile. SOLIDWORKS also tries to give us feedback on some other things that are going on. If we have the Shaded Sketch Contours option, 
Notice how it shows us when that profile is closed. With other things like rectangles and circles, either option is available. So with the circle, whether we go click and drag and let go, or click and click, it's about the same difference. Now we're going to let you go through and start a new sketch. The front plane is fine with me. Just try out the line tool, the rectangle tool, etc., and see what you can do. Don't worry about sketching anything beautiful. Just try sketching something, maybe a shape or two. And we'll walk around to help everyone out and see if they have any issues. If you want to delete one of the lines, you can select the line with the left mouse button, then hit the delete key on the keyboard. So let's see what we can do.